There is no middle ground in today's housing market. We started seeing a climb. Sales of existing homes rose sharply. So the homes that have been selling are at a higher price. Higher, higher price. Let's begin. All right, in three, two, one. It's time to cut through the clutter. Re -re Refinancing your home loan. This is your source for the latest real estate and home financing news. Home financing news. You can actually use. My prediction is that most predictions will be wrong. <gasps> it's the Market Snapshot. It's going live. And now, here's your host, Dan French. Welcome to the Market Snapshot. This is Dan French from Nova Home Loans, your go-to mortgage specialist here in Las Vegas. I'm in studio today with Chuck. It's ITZ Crusoe from Simply Vegas. Chuck, it's what's going on today, Chuck? Nothing much, boo. Oh, boo. <laughs> You're wearing the glasses today. I see that. I'm rocking it. <laughs> You're rocking it. The Market Snapshot is your source for the latest information through financing and real estate. And I uh, wanted to tell everybody out there, we're dedicated to helping you as a consumer to the best path of home ownership. We offer up-to-date content on the ever-changing Las Vegas real estate market. Chuck, it's how you feeling today on this Sunday? I'm a little bit tired, but you know what? I'm going to make it. Yeah, you got that Red Bull in you, don't you? Yeah. Well, actually, uh, <laughs> Blue <laughs> Bull. How do, you, how do you like that Blue Bull? Uh, it's pretty pretty good. All right. A little bit different. First time I've ever had it. So the Dow Jones was 190 points down on Tuesday. JB, JP Morgan was also down 4%. The Fed keeps saying rate hikes are coming. The markets are struggling, and all markets keep tightening up, though. Uh, last Friday, the release of this, the core price index number, January consumer prices were unchanged. Now, what that is, is that is really a, a barometer on what the, the Fed is looking towards on price stability. Okay, a lot of confusion has been out there about inflation, and that's the barometer they're using. But really, they're looking at price stability, consumer confidence. These things are important. And that's one of the reasons why rate hikes have not happened. We are about a 2.2 inflation rate right now. And what the Fed said was once we hit 2%, rate hikes are coming. The other thing they looked at was that unemployment, if it hit 6.5%, then rate hikes were coming. Well, we hit that. Now we've hit the 2.2%, and rates still have not started to increase. Man, you trying to scare everybody or what? Well, here's what you got to look at. Last year, how many times did I come on this radio show and tell you that rate hikes were going to go up? About 100 times. And you know what? It did, but they slipped that in at the end of the year. Because if they didn't do that, then they would think all of this is really... All talk. It's all talk. You know, you got the Fed out there saying we're going to raise rates, we're going to raise rates, and you know what? They had to do it, and they did it at the end of the year just to slip it in, but really it's not made any, really any change yeah. on what interest rates are doing and why they can't afford to raise interest rates right now. So if you're out there and you're a consumer looking to buy a home or looking to refinance your home, now's the time to do it. They're not going to raise rates anytime soon. I really don't think this is going to happen. They were saying three times this year. Now it's gone down to two. I'd be lucky if we did it once. You getting a lot of refinances? I'm getting a ton of refinances. Uh, matter of fact, half of my business right now is refinances. You know, from all different types. Condos, townhomes, jumbo loans. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'm getting all different types of loans to refinance their home right now. I think a lot of people thought, well, you know, last year, this is, you know, I missed out. And I told everybody you missed out. Yeah. But what the what is coming down here is that, the Fed does not want to raise interest rates, nor do, nor can they. If they do that, then we have risk of inflation, and if inflation comes in, cost of goods and services is going to go up. Even though oil's doing well, if you look across the board, nothing else is is thriving. Even though the economy, from all statistics and what I've been reading and what people say, is really doing well. Well, if it's doing that well, why are they holding rates down? What do you think? Well, I don't think they're going to raise rates because if they do, like you said, consumers' goods will go up and we're going to be running into a deflation. So, here, yeah, here's the next thing you got to look at. Well, if you got the unemployment at 6.5%, you got the inflation now has hit the 2% and they don't raise them now, what's the next indication? You know, it's like you said, kicking that can down the road. Yep. What's the next thing they're going to come up with that says, well, once we hit this number, 
you know, some of this stuff is important, but a lot of it is is hoopla. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's it's you know, you're saying stuff that maybe you're not going to follow up on, but at the same time, you're trying to give good information or or, or set the standard of we're going to raise rates and and you know we're going to our economy's doing well, and it's not saying it's doing it's not doing better, but it does raise an alarm to me that if the economy was doing as well as it should be. They wouldn't have problems raising rates. They wouldn't have problem raising rates. It's exactly right. Mm-hmm. And what happened as soon as they raised rates? Oil dropped. Well, and the oil dropped. Here's the thing about oil. All yeah. right. There's a lot of layoffs on oil. We've talked about that. Yep. And and yes, everybody's reaping the rewards of on this. On gas pricing and all that. Yeah, but you know what? There's a cost to everything. Exactly. There's a you pro know? and con. Something that's, goes up, must have come down. That's right. And one thing there shows that, you know what? Look, gas prices are low, but people are being laid off. There's problems, glo- you know, globally. Mm-hmm. And and really, there's still problems here. I mean, I don't think there's a, enough co- consumer confidence in people out there listening to some of the things about the economy doing well. They just don't have that confidence that they can go out. You know, people are still looking at what they're spending, and there's nothing wrong with that. Well, I think because they don't feel it on a macro level. They're not looking at it at a micro level. Right. Do you see what I'm saying? And, and they just don't feel the repercussions yet. Just let's talk about Venezuela. I mean, 95% of their money went into oil during the boom. Mm-hmm. Now oil has dropped. They're going into a deflation. They're probably going to be going into a recession. They're going to file for bankruptcy. They increased 700% on inflation. It's just crazy. They, they, they're going to run into some issues here. Yes. I also have to look at this. You have to look at, well, if you talk about inflation, how does that affect our consumers and how does it affect people buying a home? Well, if your goods and services are now going up, that means it's less money that you can spend. Yeah. Guess what? Now you're now you're working. You know, you have a lot of people that say, oh, the employment's doing well. Well, a lot of these are part-time employers. Exactly. And that's what they're counting for. Part-time jobs. It's not full-time jobs. You know, and they said that the numbers came out, you know, worse than expected. For, for the amount of homes that was recently sold here mm-hmm. in this last month, uh, we were down, I think, last year on new home sales uh, as far as what their expectation was. That is correct. It should have been, I think it was like 490 versus 537. Right. So, so. You, if you look at that, I, I don't understand why everybody thinks that it's not saying the economy is in a bad state, but it doesn't indicate to me that everything is you know going well. But again, it really depends on what state we're talking about. Obviously, we're still thriving, yeah. Even th- even though things are happening around the world. Well, you got to realize Vegas is a is a spot. It's a hot spot, really, for uh, you know entrepreneurs. Yeah. It's a hot spot for you know business owners and people to start business here. You have a lot of opportunity here. You got a you lot do. of things going across the board with downtown and mm-hmm. and also you know Las Vegas as it's at the Strip. So there's a lot of opportunity that maybe others don't have. Where if you go to the Midwest. They might be struggling, and we tell, don't know about this. I can tell you what, man. Our politicians out here, they're running this city correctly. I can tell you that. Yeah. Because we are making money. Yes. That's for sure. That's right. We appreciate you tuning in to the Market Snapshot. We uh, thank you for your listenership. And as always, it's a pleasure and a privilege to educate the Las Vegas community. And uh, you ready to go right into the Market Rundown? Let's do this. Oh, honey, what are you going to rant about today? Can we get a little preview? It's the Market Rundown. As always, we're going to start off with financing news and events, going right into the housing market, some of the statistics that uh, Chuck might have. Also, I'm going to talk about interest rate trending, and we're going to go over uh, mortgage lenders launch programs to turn more renters into homeowners. And I have a program I'm going to talk about today that's similar to the Home is Possible program. Oh, this is new. I haven't even heard about oh, this. See, it's all new. I'm not going to tell you, you everything. You tell me, and I'm your go-to guy. Hey, you are the go-to guy with the glasses. That's all right? right. When you wear the glasses, I know you mean business. Big time. <laughs> Give me my money. <laughs> As always, uh, if you want to call us in studio, 702-257-5396. The talk and text lines are open. You could text me, 6682 to 55000. You could register there. You can also get a hold of me outside studio. I have people standing by 781-6682. That's 781-NOVA. And you can go to my website, look at past information on my website, past shows, danfrenchloans.com. Again, that's danfrenchloans.com. Go there and look at, you know, look at some of these videos we've been putting together, right, Chuck? 
You, oh, you still putting out videos? Oh, I'm putting videos out. Oh, like Content, that, huh? Content galore. <laughs> galore. <laughs> so you can also tweet us at 781NOVA. And uh, stay tuned for the second part of the hour. We're going to be giving away Galaxy Theater tickets for two. Um, you know, could, could be a nice little thing to do on a Sunday afternoon or whatever. You go to the movies, right? Sometimes. So let me ask you this. How can we win these tickets? Well, you call in. You have to have a good question in front of the answer of who the actor and who the and what the movie is. Yeah. And then you get those tickets right right in your email inbox. It's so smooth. That easy, huh? It's <laughs> that easy. <laughs> and uh, again, if you want to call us in studio, 702-257-5396. Call us in studio. We want to hear from you today. Give us your thoughts on what's going on with the uh, housing market and uh, what's going on globally. Go ahead, Chuck. You got any events for me today? No, I don't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we free flown it today. That's how we do it. All right, let's talk about this. Uh, Nevada's Miss Nevada's American Pageant 2016 at the Sun Coast is going on today. Mm-hmm. You got tickets for that, right, Chuck? Sounds a little bit boring. Come on, Chuck. Man. Take Come your on. wife, man. Everybody likes to see women dressed up. You got tickets? Of course I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Maiden will perform at the Mandalay Bay. You know who Iron Maiden is? No, I'm not. Dude, too just sure. that name alone. See that? You got a rocket. There you go. Yeah, yeah, with the glasses. <laughs> also, uh, Mike Tyson, undisputed truth, live on stage at the MGM. You go into that, right? I you think that see would be some... pretty interesting. Yeah, I don't think. Th- you think he still has the knockout power that he had before? Oh, he'll knock you out. I'm sure he would, mm-hmm. but I'm talking about the power. The power? Oh, he got the power. It's, all, it's not always about the power. It's about the technique. Oh, it's about the pop. It's about the techniques. That pop, pop, pop. <laughs> that sounded pretty good. You act like you've been doing that before. You a trainer? Yeah, I'm a trainer. <laughs> also, the World Off-Road Championship Series, uh, off-road motorcycle racing in the U.S. at South Point going on today. That's right. Uh, I actually got a buddy that's uh, riding that thing, man. Yeah, are you really? Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, you should gonna, go check it out. You're going to ride on his handlebars? <laughs> man, why you got to make jokes like that? This ain't that kind of show. Chuck, come on, man. I'm about to walk out the studio right now. <laughs> you know what it says on oh, our contract. Oh, man. Also, um, you know, we as a uh, you can RSVP to attend Candle Lighters uh, Evening of Hope at the World Market Center Friday uh, yeah. for cancer. Nice. And, you know, I've had been affected by people in my life. Yep. And so anybody out there, maybe take a look at that. Because, you know, when you have people that are very close yeah. to you, uh, that's when you really take notice of diseases and things and, and you know, sickness. And, and when it starts to affect your life, typically that's when people take notice. And I know that you preach this all the time. Um, how do you think cancer has actually really started? Well, I don't, I mean, obviously I'm not a doctor. Well, I understand. I, I do think there's a lot of factors. I think, uh, I think that what you put in your body has a factor. I think what your stress level is has mm-hmm. a factor. Uh, I think your overall mood and how you uh, perceive life yeah. has a factor. You know, if you're somebody that's a very pessimist type of person or somebody that really doesn't have a lot of, um, you know, a lot of confidence or positivity yeah. coming out, I think that, that it does contribute but I think there's numerous things that go on. I mean, I think a lot of it's your genetics. And I think it starts know? off with the food you eat, too, as well. Well, I think genetics does have a huge part. Yeah. You know, I've seen some people where they've all their life smoked, smoked cigarettes. cigarettes and, <laughs> you know, but what I can say is this. You can't control that part of it. Yeah. But you can control the other things I talked about, right? Mm-hmm. So That's if correct. you can control those things, then maybe you can minimize the damages. Gotcha, gotcha. Jumping over to uh, financing news. You know, the U.S. economic, uh, really, treasuries traded higher uh, this week despite a very positive surprise following always volatility of durable goods. Uh, the Treasury note auction was postponed on until Friday. And, uh, you know, giving aside all these things that we talk about yeah. with the Treasury and things like that, it does have a direct connection with interest rates. And I think people really need to start taking notice of that. You know, um, you know, a lot of times, especially with this oil we talked about, Mm -hmm. it does contribute where where, where people put their money into a treasury versus, you know, stocks and things because it's a it's a slower yield, but it's a more guaranteed. It's more guaranteed, you know, and when you have things like this going on, well, you might want to be a little bit more sure, especially with this market up and down as it is that you're going to get your money back. Yeah. 
Also, trends we see in rent and multifamily news that will eventually uh, help us as lenders. Um, higher rents go and keep going. You know, you talk about higher rents. Across the board, we talked about this. Rents just keep getting higher. Why? That's right. Why? Because Why do you a, think? Because a lot of people, a lot of baby boomers, they don't want to own a home. Right. They're going out. They want to. Re- they would rather rent. Also, the millennials, they're getting smarter. Mm-hmm. They don't want to be tied down to a property. They don't. They, 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 they want the option to move. Absolutely. And they want to also have the ability to make money off of an investment. That's correct. So they're investing into it. A lot of people that are in that housing, uh, we'll say during a housing bubble that, you know, yeah. let their home go, they're not motivated to get back into a home. A lot of them are not buying homes. You know, you, you look at the equity that's in homes that they, that they had. Mm-hmm. Let's say it decreased. Well, maybe a lot of those people had a lot of their money and savings into those properties. Yeah. So why would you want to get back into a home and risk that again? Yeah, I think that everybody out there, the 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 Fed and, and the government want everybody to understand that, yes, the market's thriving. And But you know what? Do you ever think that maybe it's because, you know, the changing of the guard is coming up? And you look at the fact that, obviously, if you have a Democrat coming into another Democratic situation, that mm-hmm. maybe they want to look at it as, you know what? If, if that person gets elected, then guess what? Then we have the ability to show to everybody that the economy is getting better, but it's really not. And, and it makes everybody at ease, and it makes it look like the administration and things that's going on now, they're doing their job. Maybe they're not, though. Yeah, That's what you got to look at. Maybe they're not. You know, all these numbers that come out, a lot of people don't even know half of, uh, I'm going to say a good portion of people don't even know what the consumer price index is. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't know what GDP is. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't know what the core price index is. Th- these things are important when it comes to the overall health of the economy. But who, I mean, if you're just somebody that's going in Monday to Friday working and you're just trying to have a good life and this is something you're not interested in. Well, let's talk about well, the index. What, yeah. what is the G- GDP? It's gross domestic product. Okay? okay. And it's a measure of what goods and services were sold during the course of whenever they measured it. Gotcha. And that gives them a barometer of how the economy is moving and how it's thriving and on the consumer level what the confidence is. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you right now, it's maybe not as good as people think. 2015, 1.8%. That's where we were at. Also, let's talk about this. Did you know that 50-plus years Detroit has lost nearly two-thirds of its population? Woo! Is that why it's only like $20 to buy a house? (laughs) So now now they're creating things to get people to move there. Yeah. Um, And so now they're offering uh, where you can get financing above 100%. (laughs) 100% is bad. It's pairing that goes above 100%. And then they're talking about, you know, Bank of America came out with this 3% for for people. Well, what about, do they have a home is possible program there? You know what I mean? Like, what yeah. what is thriving there for them? I mean, if if we have a program here, like like I've talked about, mm-hmm. where it, there is no money out of pocket to get in this loan, very streamlined, probably the least restrictive program I've seen. Yeah. Why wouldn't they have a program? Why does it got to be, well, Bank of America is coming out with 3%. You know what? Yeah. You're going to pay for it in a rate, regardless yeah. of what you get. If you go in and you get a 3% down payment, they're going to give you a higher interest rate more often than not. Just like if you go with the Home is Possible program, it's about a half a point higher than what regular rates are going right now. So you're either going to pay for it in the rate or you're going to pay for it in the term of the loan. Pick, you know, pick how, your how, how would you do it? I think I would do it with a down payment because at the end of the day, not only am I going to have restrictions, I can buy and purchase more of a home. That's if I can. Yeah. Now, if you don't have a down payment, take advantage of it. Yeah. Why would you not? You know, I'm paying rent 3%. It goes up on average every year. Why would I not get into a home? Yeah. You know, why would I not take advantage of saying, you know what? I have a fixed payment for 30 years. I have little to no money out of pocket. You have to have an earnest money deposit. But other than that, no down payment. None. Zero. So I don't get it. I mean, (laughs) if you're talking about let's create product, create a product there that people, it makes it easier and it doesn't have so many restrictions like that one. Yes, I'm telling you, it does have a little bit higher interest rate. But at the end of the day, you're going to be a homeowner. And really, there's not a lot of restrictions for this program. Well, you may want to so, consider that program if you ain't going to live there the rest of your life as well. I mean, I mean, if you want to take advantage of free well, money, I mean, that's what I would do. Well, it's free money, but you're still, like I said, you're paying for it in the rate. But here's yeah, what but you, you ain't going to live there for 30 years. Come on now. That's what I'm saying. You, most people stay five to seven yeah. years and they're out. You might not ever hit the point of, of losing money on that rate. 
Mm-hmm. You know, if you're getting a four and, uh, four and a quarter and I'm giving you, let's say, a, a high three rate, guess what? By the time that you hit year five or six, it's going to be, hey, I'm going to think about I'm going to move. Most people don't. Like I talked to somebody yesterday. Yeah, yeah. A guy calls me. He goes, hey, what do you think about this? I said, mm-hmm. I think it's great. Let's do it. You know, he goes, well, well, should I do it with financing where I, you know, put it the down payment, excuse me, or yeah. should I just get it? With the home as possible. Yeah. And I said, why don't you, you know, weigh it out? Let's look at it. How, Break down when, the numbers. When are you going to leave that property? Yeah, yeah. He goes, well, I probably will stay there about three to five years. We calculated seven years before he starts losing money on that rate yeah. for the home as possible because you're getting a higher rate. Mm-hmm. He said, let's go that route. Yeah. Why not take advantage of the money? There's no there's no uh, restrictions on zip code. No restriction whatsoever. Zero. Well, I'm sure there's other restrictions as far as the selling and stuff like that, right? Well, you know what? I've I've was corrected because I thought there was a five year waiting period. Yeah, there is not, and that's what I've been corrected. Oh on. no! Did you just admit somebody called you out? Yeah, they called me out. And I said, yeah, actually, because I was talking to E. How uh, I don't want to say who the name, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was talking to uh, somebody <laughs> over, you know, uh, where they needed to uh, administrate that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I could tell you right now, mm-hmm. I was pretty much white. Whiter mm-hmm. than I am now, and I'm pretty white. So you were clear. <laughs> I was clear. Like, nobody's seen where I was at. They mm-hmm. were like, oh, he's gone. Hey, Dan, was I talking to you on the phone, Dan? Where are you at? He's gone. <laughs> <laughs> but they <laughs> uh, they said, blink. <laughs> so the reason why that's important, though, is because there is yeah. no zip code or there's no uh, restriction on getting out of that in five years. But keep so. in mind, there are programs out here that are restricted to certain zip codes. And when you are strict, restricted to certain zip codes, man, it's kind of hard to get a home. How hard is it when you sense, when you go out with somebody that's really restrictive like that? Well, it really depends on the price point, but based upon today's price point, I can tell you right now, one of the programs that we were working on with North Las Vegas, they only got like three zip codes. <laughs> <laughs> They're only down to three now. Yeah, so it was like pick one. Did they? Well, how many did they have before? Like fifteen? No, I mean there were there were a few, but it, it's pretty restricted. Oh yeah. All, all I'm saying is you you have to look at the pros and cons. I mean, yeah. if you want to be in North Las Vegas, that's fine, but you have to see what those zip codes are. <laughs> Don't just get it because it's free money. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like here's the thing: stop uh, trying to get things for free. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> This is Dan French with the Market Snapshot. We'll be right back. We have a whole lot of show left. We're going to talk about uh, ways to become a homeowner. And we're going to give away those movie tickets here at the top of the hour. And we're also going to talk about housing market statistics. So stay tuned. Get the latest financing and real estate news anytime you like. Just log on to danfrenchloans.com. Oh, sure, I can do that. Don't you dare go away. More with Dan and company coming right up here on the Market Snapshot. Welcome back to the Market Snapshot. This is Dan French from Nova Home Loans, your go-to mortgage specialist here in Las Vegas. And I'm here in studio again with Chuck. It's ITZ Crusoe. From Simply Vegas. That's right. Google it. Chuck, it's what's going on, man? How you feeling? I'm feeling great, man. What'd you end up doing last night? Oh, I'm doing great. What are you looking at? Oh, I don't know. Just looking at some things here. <laughs> so, <clears throat> wanted to touch base with you and uh, wanted to touch, you know, talk to you a little bit about um, trying to get into giving away these movie tickets you're gonna give them away already (laughs) yeah we had a we have a video here that we're trying to put together chuck can you put that together for us this thing this thing stopped on us so we're trying to get this video content going out Mm -hmm. so anyways let's go back to uh talking about the housing market and you said about the housing market what what changes did you see that really came forward um maybe this week did anything change that's really significant that you've seen yeah, if we take a look at the median price right now, uh, we are at two back down actually down to a two twenty. Uh huh. At one hundred and twenty dollars a square foot. One hundred and twenty dollars a square foot. Now the average uh, square foot is at eighteen thirty one. Average days on the market is four days. Normally it was around uh, forty one days, so it right. took a little bit longer to close. But I mean that's basically where we're sitting right now. Okay. So I mean we're doing pretty good. So let's ask this question. You know, I've had yeah, a lot yeah, of people come to me and say, you know what, I want to get closing costs. Paid by, uh, paid by the seller. Yeah, is that happening? It depends. So, so before it was yes. Now it's depends. Yeah, it depends on your agent. Where's, 
Yeah. Well, let's say this. The market right now, yeah, yeah. Uh, is it there's more properties in the market than there's demand for buyers? No. Uh, it's been about stagnant since the beginning of the year. I mean, we're hovering around uh, 9,100 homes. All right. That's with uh, single-family uh, residents, duplexes, triplexes, fourplexes, condos, and townhomes. Um, things are moving along. Um I noticed that the buyers are now starting to pay for their closing costs. It just makes the deal a lot easier. But yeah. it, it just really depends in today's market. It's really case-by-case case basis. I mean, before you even get into the deal, let's see if we can find out what the situation of the seller is and, you know, are they pretty motivated on, you know, selling the property and are they pretty flexible? Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the seller wants to work with the buyer and the buyer wants to work with the seller yes. to get the deal done. But – what happens is sometimes you got, you know, agents, you know, kind of kill the deal. Right. You know, they want to get involved in the deal. Right. And, you know, from my experience, t to me, I, I close a lot more deals when you just educate your clients and have them make that make that educated decision on how to negotiate this deal. All right. And that's why it's very important. You know, once you prepare them, you know, once you're back out in that marketplace, it just makes it so much easier. It really does. So I have a And I, I don't get emotionally involved. You know what I mean? I understand. I I'm just trying to get paid, son. Are you? <laughs> That's what you're trying to do, right? I'm trying to get, I'm hey, trying to make everybody happy. You got to worry about that money later. You got to yeah, take right. care of the client first. All right. You know what? You're absolutely right. And you know, all kidding jokes on the side. You know, I like to play around, but you know, at the end of the day, I literally do this seven days a week. And you know, this is what I do, well, and I I want to help my clients out. I really do. Let's look at it from a consumer standpoint. Yeah, yeah. All right. You have a, your consumer that's going out. We have somebody that we're working with right now. Yeah. Uh, they're out looking for a home. They're asking me, what's my payment with taxes, insurance, and mortgage insurance? Yeah. And I've already approved them for a high amount. Mm -hmm. Maximize their approval really with their debt ratio at the cap. Yeah, yeah. And what happens with that is, well, if if I see that there's there could be a potential problem, right, with mm -hmm. them – you know, getting qualified, I ask him, ask them what the HOA payment is because I got to put that HOA payment to make sure that they credit qualify and, and also that they qualify on debt. That way we can make sure that they get into the home. Now, mm -hmm. you don't want to be put in a position like that. So, you know, it's good because every time if you instruct your client that every time you go out, if you're on, on the fence, you're already at your maximum approval. Like we said, 220 right now is the is the average median price home for existing, right? Yeah, that's correct. So if you're out and you're trying to find a home, well, and you tell your client that if you're only approved for 180, they're stretching it. Yeah, yeah. They don't have as many opportunities as let's say somebody that's you know buying that price point. And and that's the thing, a lot of consumers, you know, once they get the approval letter, you know, if they're approved for 200 or 180 whatever it is, right. they think, "Hey, you know what? I can max it out at 180." But you have to understand what plays a factor is the taxes that the lender cal has to calculate well, yeah. and also the HOA. Yes. So what happens is you have to understand that we have to work together as a team as far as the consumer, the lender, and also the agent. And when the agent is experienced and he goes out into the marketplace, he looks at that property, he already knows uh, based upon that lender's qualifications that, hey, he's already made that buffer zone for 150 on the taxes. Right. Or if the HOA is at, at, at 80, what's their debt-to-income ratio? Okay. Here, here's the other thing, too. Yeah. I had a VA person, a buyer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call me last night, and yes, I answered my phone on a Saturday at 5 o'clock. Oh, you did? I do. So I just want to let you know that. But I'm going to tell you something. He you ain't got to let me know that. I already know that. I know, but everybody out here has got to know that that's yeah. listening to this. So I want to say something, though. He's calling me going, my lender told me that I'm buying a $417,000 home. Yeah. And you know what he said? What? He said that lender quoted me that my payment's going to be only $1,600 a month. And I said, are you out of your mind? Yeah. yeah. Not to the client, but I'm thinking that, you know? And I'm like, look, first off, don't go to a mortgage calculator to find out what your payment is. That's yeah. not the way to do it. It gives you an idea of what your principal and interest would be, but it still does not put everything pertaining to you as a person, mm -hmm. as a consumer, yeah. with all of your compensating factors. Mm -hmm. That does not help you. So he told me this, and I said, no, that's not the truth, okay? So- VA does not have any mortgage insurance. It just yeah, has yeah. hazard insurance, and it has uh, we just have taxes. So I calculated his payment, told him his payment. So please, if you're out there, don't go to these mortgage calculators that you see on there and think mm -hmm. that's what I'm that's what I'm gonna get. You know, it, it's 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 crazy. The other thing too is that you know I had another buyer, you know, come in and say, you know, look, I'm a person that that gets tips. Yeah. And there's two sections of tips. Yeah, yeah. And one of them wasn't recording on the year to date. And mm -hmm. and this is a total separate situation. But if you look at the, as a tipped employee here, there's a lot of them here in Las Vegas, right? Yeah. So you have a tip 
that is showing and it shows the total amount, but then the others don't. It's very hard to prove that when you're just putting a total amount of of look, this is my my gross income and this is all I can this is all I made, but then it doesn't show the breakdown in the tips. Yeah. You have to order a verification of employment. Why? Because nobody knows where that money's going or where that money it's came from. from yeah. So you if you're a tipped employee, one you got to look at the fact is where is it at on your W2s if it's there? The second thing, how is it showing up on your pay stub? Okay? Is it showing up at different places? Yeah. You know, is it showing up as tips? I've seen some of them. If you're a dealer, it's showing up as tokens. Mm-hmm. So tokens. You, tokens. <laughs> That's what I said. But hey, I'll run with it. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh-huh. we still proved it. The idea, the, the the bottom line is, you want to make sure you're getting accurate information from your lender or people that is is giving you this information. If you have any questions, financing or real estate, give us a call in studio 702-257-5396. Again, that number is 702-257-5396. Also, the talk and text lines are open. You want to text me, 6682 to 55000. Please get registered. Find out what we can do for you. The other thing is, is I have a new website, danfrenchloans.com. Go there and look at us at past shows. A lot of it's just me. Sorry, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 me. <laughs> Damn, your chest said, is huge. <laughs> this dude so, walking around with a pigeon chest. <laughs> so, so I'm going to tell yeah, you, yeah. though, other than that, you can tweet us, 781-NOVA. You can call us outside studio, 781-NOVA, 6682. You can schedule a free consultation. And if you're just tuning in, it's Dan French with the Market Snapshot on KDWN News Talk Radio here every Sunday from 11 to 1 p.m. Is that right, Chuck? It's- That's right. You know, I was talking to a prospector the other day, and she told me that she was uh, speaking to this banker, uh-huh. and she was told that she's going to get an interest rate, right? and this is how much my payment is. I said, ma'am, that interest rate is not the interest rate you're going to get because uh-huh. you don't know where you're going to lock in. And a you lot don't. of consumers are misled right? because what happens is I notice lenders will say, hey, I'll get you this rate. But at the end of the day, you ain't getting that rate because we don't know what your rate's well, going to be when you lock in. Here's what everybody needs to understand. There's so many loan products out there, streamline yeah, yeah. refinances. You know, you could do that with VA and FHA. You have conventional loans. The idea is this. When somebody texts me or email me, I had a, a yeah, person yeah. email me and say, you know what? I have a loan right now mm-hmm. that's at 4.125%. Yeah. Okay. Can I get, can I save money? If I can, please get the process started. I just get people do that to me all the time. Yeah. I don't really know anything about them. Mm-hmm. They just email me this question. And the best thing to do is fill out an application to get started yeah. and then find, and then I could really find out. Now, if you're saying, am I going to go from a 4.125% interest rate? The only thing I could really do, unless you're a veteran, is refinance it to an FHA because you're probably going to be right there around the same price or the same interest rate, assuming you have good credit. Yeah. So is it really a savings? No. And it mm-hmm. doesn't make sense for me. I mean, you might go to a 15-year note. You know, if you're on year 29 and there's 14 years of interest that's out there, that could be, you know, two dollars $300,000. And, and that savings might make sense if you're going to go to a 15-year. Now, refinances, they have been up, you know, last two weeks. Kind of stagnant last week, was down a little bit. That's fine. I mean, it doesn't mean anything really, but it does show that people, when they start to see a little hiccup where rates did show an indication they were going up a tad, well, refinances now, they kind of went level. They, yeah. they didn't. They went the other direction, really. I mean, they, they lost a little bit. They went down, I think, about 8%. 8%. Is an eighth and a, uh, eighth and a point, is that going to make or break you? Eighth of a point, listen, everybody's got their barometer of what yeah, they yeah, want to yeah. save. Some people might be tight, and if it's $40, $50 in your payment, hey, that's $40, $50 I can do something with. Yeah, yeah. If some people might be, you know what, I- I'm only going to save $200. I want to save three dollars or $400, or it won't make sense. I get that too. So it depends on the person, but I can tell you this. If I don't get enough savings from that refinance, I'm not doing your refinance. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. Like I, don't, I wouldn't put somebody in a position that's the same position – just so I can get a loan. That doesn't make any sense. Yeah. So, yes, the refinances are going. Yes, the rates are doing well. I don't think the Fed's going to raise rates anytime soon. They may increase a bit just because the when you have the Fed and people out there in the economy, the economists telling everybody rates are going to go up, and then they don't go up, what does that tell you? That means they're full up. That's it. And they don't... <laughs> They don't have a lot of confidence. Yeah, yeah. And guess what? Mm -hmm. The reason why this market thrives is off of consumer confidence. And goods. And I'm going to tell you something. If you Mm -hmm. have consumer confidence 
in the market, yeah. you're going to go out there and buy that TV. Mm-hmm. You're going to go out there and buy these things that maybe you might think twice on if you're out and you're saying, you know what, I got all this money in the bank, but I'm thinking about inflation. And if I and might it, have to hold off. And if you got somebody talking like they're going to do something and not do it, then what happens is that consumer will just sit and wait. You could do the backwards thing. What? I think inflation is going to go up, and let's just go spend all of our monies before it happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's stick with that. <laughs> if you're a person that does that, please yeah, don't yeah. do that. The, th- the thing to do is really, uh, if inflation goes up, we've talked about this. It's been going up. If it's it goes not up, if it goes up. If it goes up to 3 or 4%, the Fed has no way to, co- to correct this yeah. this time. They just don't. There's going to be a problem. Uh, QE4? Well, they've talked about it, but then we talked to our economist over at uh, – UNLV? Yeah, but that's his own opinion. Everybody has an opinion. Do you Listen, know what I mean? Listen, my opinion means the most. Okay? I know. It's all about me. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> 781 Nova Dan, Dan Twitter, Dan Facebook, Dan Dan, Dan. <laughs> hey, come on, man. You know, I'm just trying to put out good content. You're not listening to it? <laughs> yeah, I'm listening to it. <laughs> so anyways, let's talk yeah. about the rates. So rates, to me... I think are going to stay the same if you have not refinanced your home, Mm -hmm. if you have not considered purchasing a home and you're a renter, why would you not? Let's talk about renters versus owners. You're a renter out there. What is the benefit or the perks of being a renter, Chuck? Because they're mobile. They can leave whenever they want. If they want to break the lease, they're going to break the lease. Is that still requiring money to be deposited into an account for some type of payment? That is correct. Is it going to anything? No. Why would you do it? Why would you lock yourself up on a 30-year loan? Because I would look at the return <laughs> on the investment, and if I wanted to leave, I could sell it. And yeah. in this market, you're not sitting on your house. How quick does it take for somebody well, to let, sell their house? Well, let me ask you this. If you're buying a property for future equity, you're buying properties for the wrong reason. If you are buying properties for cash flow, then you are buying it for the right reasons. Well, let's say this, though. I always look at it as if I have to invest my money into something, yeah. I'm going to invest it with the with the opportunity to mm-hmm. get something in return. You got interest write off. Yeah. Right. You got a way that you can get your taxes. You go out and you purchase, you know, I don't know, TV or you go out and purchase, you know, um, couches, anything you purchase for your home, appliances, you know, washer, dryer, uh, a stove, you get ta- the taxes that's on that. You get that as a write-off as well. So why would you not? It's it's basically, look, if you're a person out there, the, the housing economy is is really the backbone is is the housing market. If you have a problem where, like you said, our, our housing numbers went down last year. Yeah. That is a problem, especially when you have – Home buying pro- uh, possibility with no money down. Yeah. You have rates that are low, and you have properties that really are in abundance right now, right? I want to say in abundance, but, you know, there are properties out there. You do have to find them. A supply and demand. Tell me what that is, like, as far as right now. So, obviously, if we have a lot of properties on the market, then it becomes a buyer's market where the um, – Buyer gets to choose, and they can take advantage of the seller, not in that way. Right. Now, if the supply is less, then we have more of a demand. So there are a lot of buyers that want to buy properties, but there's not that many properties. So what happens is the seller now has full control and has more of the leverage of getting more money for their property. And that's how home prices will increase. Let's put it in 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 an instance here. We had a, a problem last week where there's... Problems with the roof on this specific house. Yeah. Problems with that you need to get fixed. Yeah. How do you approach it if the seller's not willing to help with those costs? They've already they've already dropped a little bit. Mm-hmm. Can you go back and say drop another ten grand? Yes, you can. And again, and this is what it really comes down to is really analyzing the seller, figuring out what position they are in. Are they actually a real seller or not? Like when we went into this deal, the asking price was about a hundred and eighty-five thousand, which is I went into this deal for about a hundred and seventy thousand, right. knowing that there were certain things that I would uh, have to renegotiate again. But at the end of the day, I want to get this deal into contract first because I know once we're in the contract, now the seller is mostly involved into this deal. In addition to that, what we do is I like to do the research to see um, where did this buyer come from. Uh huh. This buyer was actually from China, and they bought this property a couple years ago, and they bought it for about $120,000. So I knew that they wanted to sell this property and that they were motivated. What, so, what is the purpose of that? You come 
the, 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 obviously they came from China. They purchased this home. Are yeah. they trying to make a quick dollar? Is that what it was? No, they, they bought it a few years ago, so it wasn't an investment property. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this is because, you know, you know my license plate. What does it say? Um, the man with glasses? <laughs> Negotiator. <laughs> is that what it says? No, it says negotiate. But anyway, the, the reason why this is important is because when it comes to negotiating, you have to have an art form. Right. And, and I love real estate. Well, you got to know what's going to – it's not it's, – it's an art form, but you got to know what the market – you have to well, you You have to understand exactly what is going right. on the market. You have to understand the rules of the game. And mm-hmm. at that point, then you got to engage and play the rules. Right. I want to say one thing yeah, about yeah. that. It's about adapting. In this business – in our in our profession, it changes like every month, every week. Yeah, it's crazy. And you have to adapt. You have mm-hmm. to understand where it's heading. That's why it's important to watch or listen to this show. You can watch it too on my my website. Yeah, my website. Yeah, but here's the thing: it's good. It's good information yeah. because if you're you might not even be able, you might not want to purchase them. I don't know. Yeah, but I can tell you if if I'm just an average person out there, I would like to know and be smarter in these areas that really affect us. This stuff affects us on a whole. And you know what? There are prospectors out there that we convert into buyers. I send over to you. And next thing you know, they get approved and they sit down with me and the homes just don't exist and they just go back to renting. I mean, that has happened multiple times because at the end of the day, I'm not trying to slam you in the home. You know, I'm trying to educate you to show you exactly what's going on. Right. So when a consumer is like, hey, I want to buy a home. All right. Let's hold off for a second. Number one, let's figure out how much you're qualified first. OK, absolutely. At that point, let's meet yep. up with me. Yep. Tell me exactly what you want. Let's see if those homes exist. Right. And if they don't, can we make adjustments? And are you still happy? Sometimes the consumers won't go from a single family to a townhome. How, how emotionally involved do these clients get? Like if I'm buying a home and I'm going through a process and I get a contract, I'm like, you know, <laughs> I'm happy. You yeah. know, I got a contract. I'm like telling my family, hey, I'm going to buy a house. I got all this information going on. But as a consumer, when you have to come to them and say, you know what? Uh, the the property's fine, but you have problems here because there's things that need to be repaired because of the inspection. The appraiser's mm-hmm. going to find it, and it's about ten thousand dollars. So now they're emotionally invested. What is your tactic to say, look, can we get this done, and can we, you know, appease everybody in the situation? Well, let's start off this. When we sit down with the consultation, we we explain to our clients how the rundown you know, from, from start to ending and what could and what could not happen to the transaction. Right. And they understand that deals can fall apart because there's so many contingencies throughout the transaction. But for this right. case, you know, what we do is we once we negotiate the deal with the seller, we put it into a contract, you know, part of our game is, again, getting this deal into contract, then going back to renegotiating as far as what the type of repairs that need to be done. Now, again, uh, for this transaction, I already knew that, number one, it was a cash buyer that purchased this property. I knew things that were wrong with the property. I already right. got the price reduction. Uh, doing the inspection, I knew things were coming up. Now, once I got the inspection report, I was using that as leverage, as am- in order to go back and to negotiate with the seller and explain to the seller, like, hey, I do need a $10,500 price reduction. Does, let me say this, though. Is the seller really interested in looking at that, especially at the beginning? They're, they're they, always going to be like, nope, I got this wall. You yeah. know, I'm not going to budge. All right. I'm not going to do it. Then you come back and you say, you know what? You have an inspection. Mm-hmm. This inspection report shows right here you have some problems. Yes. And typically for, for, for this deal, I went back and I explained to the seller, like, hey, Mr. Seller, look, if you put this property back on the market, I can tell you right now, uh-huh. it's not going to make FHA financing. Yep. And you're going to have a problems with conventional financing once they find out there is something wrong with the roof. Absolutely. So here's the thing. Unfortunately, when you bought the property, you should have done an appraisal done to the property or you should have had a professional inspect the property. So that way, when you have an extra strategy to sell these type of properties, that you're going to be able to sell it to a finance buyer. And sometimes a lot of investors don't realize this or new investors that come into the game where they just buy a property cash. Uh-huh. But remember, on that exit strategy. Right. You want to make sure you can sell it to a finance buyer because the majority of well, your buyers in today's market is finance buyers. Yeah, it's, it, and that's 60%. A pro- that's a problem because if you have condo financing, that's really a problem yeah. if, you, if you own it. Mm-hmm. You know, with the same situation, if you have a problem, a pro- property with a problem, it's going to yeah, be yeah. hard to resell that. And I'm going to tell you, condo financing, it's tough. You know, I've done, I'm doing one right now. Yeah. You know, I had a person come in, but this guy's got equity. He's got a ton of equity. 
you know. Mm-hmm. But if you're coming in and going, I want to purchase a home, and you know, especially if there's litigation against that condo, you're not going to get that close. Is it easier to refinance a condo or actually buy a condo? It's easier. To, it's not easier either way. What it is is what do you have invested into the condo? Yeah, now, yeah. If you're refinancing it, obviously you already own it. Yeah. So you probably have a, an extensive amount of equity in it. A lot of times, if you have 20 percent or more equity in a home, mm-hmm. it does help a lot. You know, um, I could tell you this, if you're going to go buy a, fi- a condo financing and try to get that, the biggest thing you got to look at is what nobody understands. I have a client right now that says, I don't know what a questionnaire is and, mm-hmm. and I don't expect you to, but you have to go to your HOA company typically and get a lender questionnaire. That is first. That's before you even consider talking about me because why mm-hmm. it's going to tell you if you have litigation against that condo facility, if that condo facility has litigation, your only out is, is if the insurance is paying for that litigation. Woo. If you don't have that, you're and, out of luck. And if it's not already even paid for, then you're going to run into issues, you're right? You're going to run into issues. Now, I have a limited review option, mm-hmm. but it doesn't pertain. If there's litigation, it doesn't help. But that, that opportunity would be there to you know go past the occupancy issue. Sometimes when there's more renters than there is buyers, Investors have problems. And, and that's why within our consultation of what's going on with the Las Vegas real estate market, right. we explain all this stuff. Hey, this is the issue that you're going to run into if you purchase a townhome. This is the issue if you do pay cash and you de- right. de- decide to sell in the near future. And this is what could happen. So we really break it down for our consumers so that way they know exactly what is going to, you know, what's going on, what will take place. I'll tell you this. Yeah. Everybody that I work with, including you, what I would want to know coming into buying a home, which is the biggest investment a single middle class person is going to make, mm-hmm. is how much and what is involved and what could affect me. Yeah. If I know all that and I still just jump into it at least i know it's on me mm-hmm. but if you don't know certain things and you're trying to figure it out you need to have a good lender or a good realtor that's going to tell you this stuff this is dan french with the market snapshot here news talk radio 7 20 a.m we'll be right back we have a whole lot of show left we're going to give away the movie tickets we're also going to talk about renters versus uh, buying a home we're going to go in more depth on that and also we're going to give away these uh these movie tickets we'll be right back Get the latest financing and real estate news anytime you like. Just log on to danfrenchloans.com. Oh, sure, I can do that. Don't you dare go away. More with Dan and company coming right up here on the Market Snapshot. Welcome back to the Market Snapshot. This is Dan French from Nova Home Loans, your go-to mortgage specialist here in Las Vegas. And I wanted to find out if you had, uh, Chuck, what's going on with you, man? We got some movie tickets we got to give away, right? Yeah, can I have them? <laughs> you always try to get them. <laughs> so let's go right back into what we were talking about, the uh, housing situation. Um, so o- overall, the, how's the housing market looking here in Las Vegas? You know what? It's going strong, man. If you're a buyer, now is yeah. actually time to buy. I'm getting offers accepted. Right. I mean, we're probably putting uh, one or two contracts in a week. I mean, that's how fast we're moving here. That's so. pretty hot. No, it's hot. It's yeah. real hot. Yeah. Also, uh, want to talk. Let's get, You want to give those movie tickets away? Let's go ahead and give those movie tickets away. Did you have, we have a, uh, we need a movie. <laughs> Who are you asking? Nobody I'm looking responded. at you. <laughs> I, I'm, nobody's looking at me and I'm like. Do you want to give those movie tickets away? He's over Crickets. there. Re- Crickets. Yeah. He's over, <laughs> he's over there on the phone. He's like multitasking with like seven different things. And then he finally looks over and goes, oh yeah, the movie. I got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. So you got to, we're going to give away a movie tickets for two. We're going to give away to Galaxy Theaters, and if you can guess the actor and you can guess the movie with a question financing a real estate to start, you're going to get these tickets. So let's go ahead and give that out. What would you do on last summer again? I told you. I spent it with my uncle in Alaska hunting wolverines. Did you shoot any? Yes, like 50 of them. They kept trying to attack my cousins. What the heck would you do in a situation like that? Chuck, you know what that is, right? You live that life every day. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I, I didn't even listen to the whole uh, sound bite. No? No, I didn't. All right. Anybody out there that can guess that movie and guess the movie quote with a question financing real estate to start, you can call us in studio, 702-257-5396. I want to hear from you about any questions you've had, maybe experiences you've had. 702-257-5396. Uh, give us a call in studio. Also, you could text me. Talk and text lines are now open again. Uh, we got 6682 to 55,000. You can call and register for a free tool 
And also, you can get all the access to my website, danfrenchloans.com, and you can get a lot of good information from just going and texting that, that number. Also, you can give us a call outside studio. I have people standing by right now. Chuck, are you going to stand by for me? I'm sitting by. <laughs> I'm sitting by right now. You got to have a phone in your hand. Yeah. We got the, the number is 781-6682. That's 781-NOVA. You can schedule a consultation with me. I love to sit down and find out what your goals are. You know, a lot of people, they come in, they got credit problems or there are things that maybe they didn't really count on happening in their life. And I understand that. But you know what? Credit services, including myself, will put you back in a direction where you can get either one, you can get your credit fixed. The second thing is, is you can get home financing down the road. And it's something that's very beneficial to everybody out there. So that's another thing I have. Um, also, oh, we got a caller on line one. Carol, let's talk with Carol. Is Carol there? Um, yes. Hey. Thank you, my call. Thank you, Carol, for calling in. We appreciate you calling in. Well, I, I'm going to take a guess at that. I'm not sure I know the quote. Oh, okay. whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Hold on. You got to ask a real estate question. Hey, just make one up. Just say, like, um, you know, <laughs> does it come up with I something do. good? Where are rates at? <laughs> I, do have a good, I do have a good real estate question because a neighbor of mine recently sold. I'm in the college, um, college drive, Boulder area in Henderson, mm -hmm. right? Right. And it's a track. A track home community and my neighbor recently sold her um three bedroom uh two bath home for like just over two hundred thousand like it might have been two ten right and um it has a pool and she got um you know like i said over two hundred thousand for about two hundred thousand and she sold it within a week and she had a bunch of offers and it's a single story and i wow i kind of wondered if she just if that's a sign of for what that type of home is worth, or is she just lowballed it because they were leaving quick? Chuck, Chuck what do you think on that? Well, I, I, I could tell you right now within that zip code, if we actually just take a look right next to College Drive at 210, remember the median price is about that 220 today. So she probably got a higher offer right. than 210. Sometimes what happens is a listing agent, part of their strategy, they will list the property for about $10,000 below uh, the median price to attract buyers to get multiple offers. But if we take a look, uh, College Drive, I can tell you right now, if we do a mile radius, it's about $178,000. That's the median in, within that location. So at 210, it sounds like it is pretty correct. Correct. Remember, just because the median is at 220 across the valley, it doesn't mean that this zip code or this uh, subdivision is going to be 220. So you have to understand that. It's all broken down. And, Carol, you know, you said it, it went away uh, or it was sold in a week. That's pretty quick. Well, I mean, that's normal. It, normal. Okay, so you're saying out there that it's a, a week is normal time frame. We were talking Last year at one point, it was like 40 or 50 days, and now she said it's a week? Well, it, it's 41 days from, from you know start to ending as far as closing. Okay. So, again, if you price your property correctly, these properties are going to move fast. Like now, hotcakes. Hotcakes. Now, here's the thing. If you're a seller and you lowball it, trust me, you're always going to get top dollar because what's going to happen is the – Buyer or the consumer is going to take a look at this property and say, why is it cheap? Let's go take a look at it. Trust me, in today's market, no matter if you list it low, you're always going to get top dollar for the property because Car supply and demand. Carol, I just want to say something. Thank you for that good question. Did that answer your question? It did. It sounds like she actually got a little more than the going rate in our neighborhood, which, by the way, the zip code is 89002. You probably... Yes, it's don't. it's at $127 per square foot, and the average days in the market with that zip code is 15 days. Yeah. So it, it's right. They, they sold it correctly. There you go. Also, what's that movie quote and the actor? I'm sure you're going to get this. Carol? Um, I'm going to say... Um, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. I'm not sure. Oh, producer? <laughs> okay. I guess that was the indication. That I was a good try. I... You were close, I think, right? Or no? No? Oh. she was. He said you were close, but not close enough. <laughs> well, what she can do is have her daughter call in now. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Carol, thank you for calling in with that good question, all right? We appreciate it. Um, 
you know, we'll try to give a consolation prize. I'm going to give out a uh, $10 gift card to Starbucks for you. Nice. All right. So go ahead oh, and, thank uh, you. yeah, we appreciate you calling in. So go ahead and, and tell the producer what your uh, email is and also your um, your address, and we'll send it out to you, okay? Tony. Tony. Is Tony on line one? Tony on line one. Hey, is this T? Tony, is this T? I guess Tony's gone. Man, you insulted the guy. That's messed up, man. No, you know T. T? You don't know T? Tony Mon from, from the Sopranos. Yo, T. Yo, T. <laughs> hey, we're going to get beat up, man, since we leave this studio. That, 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 <laughs> I guess Tony thought that Carol was going to get the right answer, which oh, she didn't. So and so and if Tony, Tony's, call back, Tony. If Tony's still listening, then he has a good shot. But if he turned the radio off and he's upset, he's yeah. like, that, forget that. We I'm, should probably play I'm the out. quote again and give the number out again just so <laughs> Tony, everybody. Tony, Tony was waiting until we got to the movie quote, and he's like, all right, I'm done. I lost it. <laughs> Tony, call back. What's the number, Dan? All right. If you guys want to give us a call in studio, we're going to play that movie quote one more time. Uh, 781-6682 to schedule a free consultation outside. If you want to call us inside studio here, 257-5396. Again, that number, 257-5396. Give us a call. Call now. (laughs) Yeah, we're going to play uh, the quote, the movie quote. Yeah, you got to name it. What did you do last summer again? I told you, I spent it with my uncle in Alaska, hunting wolverines. Did you shoot any? Yes, like 50 of them. They kept trying to attack my cousins. What the heck would you do in a situation like that? Yeah, I know exactly what this was. Just by the voice, you you can't know, you you should know exactly. You might not know what movie, but you know who the actor should be. Can I shout it out? I I don't know if this is it. Can I shout it out? I don't want you to do no shout outs, all right? Oh, we got it. Oh, Tony's back. Tony's back. O.T. Is this old Tony? Yeah. What's up, Tony? Not much. I got good news and bad news. I know. The, I don't know the name of the actor. Oh. So. Man, we might have to try to give a consolation again, but you know what? That's going to be a tough one. Let's 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 do a shot in the dark here on this one. Let's see what happens. Well, well, before we do that, let's get a question. <laughs> All right. What's your question here, Tony? You got a good question for financing or real estate? Just, just out of curiosity, what's the current rate today for a 30-year 30, 30 fixed rate mortgage? Absolutely good question. Now, I'm not going to go out and give you a real, you know, hit on exactly what it is. Ballpark would be nice. All right. So what I'm going to say is this. If you're going on a 30-year fixed loan, FHA, conventional, why are you putting them? You're putting this on me here. FHA, conventional, or VA, you're probably looking at about 3.5 to about 4% in that okay. range, okay? That answers my question I because I wanted to know, like, basically FHA. FHA is going to be one of the better loan rates that you're going to get. VA is it's the best loan program, program that's out there, but I can tell you the rate itself, rates are really good. If you get into a 15-year fixed rate right now, you're probably talking in the low threes. <laughs> I mean, wow. who's yeah, so that's a good thing, you know. Um let, let's do this. Let's go ahead and guess that movie quote and let's see what we can get you uh some movie tickets. Okay. I know the movie, but I can't I I, I know that goofy guy too, but I don't know his name. <laughs> well give us an answer. Give us something. Throw something Make out it there. Up. Tom Hanks. No. <laughs> <laughs> um ready? Yeah, let's bring it. Okay, the movie's Napoleon Dynamite. All right, that's one. And the goofy guy, I, I can't, don't even know. I'd say uh, Tom Sullivan. <laughs> <laughs> Next caller, Tony. We got to go hey, down I the line, said, buddy. I could have said, uh, I don't know. We're on to the, we have to go to the next, but here's the thing. Huh. Get your information. Okay. All right, listen, I'll give you a consolation prize. All right. Same thing. Just because you called in, we appreciate that. Well, thank you very you, much. You thanks always get something. My question. Yeah. No, thanks for calling in. I mean, we appreciate your listenership, and hopefully you continue to listen. All day, every day. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right, Tony. We got another caller. And you want to move on? We've got Kevin on line one. Let's go to Kevin on line one and see if he's got Kevin. this. Kevin. Kevo. Yes. Hey, Kevo. What's going on, buddy? I know the name of the actor. All right. Hey, real estate question or finance question. You know the game. Man, Chuck's like a, he's holding people's feet to the fire. And he's That's like a, right. Got a whip out. This is a real estate uh, finance show. Bring it. <laughs> I gotta, I'm trying to determine what, what kind of value my house is in the 89032 zip code. 89. Let's take a look here. Let's see exactly what your property is worth in today's Give us a ballpark market. of what your square footage of home is, and it, what else would you need, Chuck? 
Well, let me let me get that square footage real quick. What was the square footage? 1,088 square feet. All right. 1,088 square feet. It's a corner lot, too, and it's big, big yard. Okay. Uh, tell, tell us a little bit about the home. It's a uh, single story, three bedroom, two bath. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh-oh. Are you looking to refinance or maybe considering uh, selling in the future? I was looking at the sale price. Just the sale price. You just want to know what your what how much equity you possibly have. Is that right? Yes, right. Yeah. And okay. what type of upgrades you got to that property? And what was the zip code again? Eight nine zero three two. Eight nine zero three two. Right. All right. I haven't had many upgrades to it. I there's some paint and new carpet but other than that nothing spectacular hey but you've done you've done well on keeping it up and and you know, obviously it's a uh, pretty decent condition right yeah new plumbing there you go yeah it's in good shape chuck you got an idea over there well well let, let, me, let me ask you this did you do any type of upgrades or is it just all stock and standard and what what was the year that was built on that thing uh 1997 and they put the new plumbing in i think in 2011 because it was a kitech plumbing uh, <laughs> yeah. Was it really? Hey, why are you laughing at him, man? Because I knew that thing was coming. Kai Tech, <laughs> everybody's got that Kai Tech plumbing in their mind because that whole big lawsuit and everything that went on here. Uh, do, do you know anything about the Kai Tech plumbing? Why don't you enlighten us a little bit? Just just a very snapshot view of what that is, okay? Well, in February 16 of 2006, there's a big lawsuit with a lot of these developers. Uh, basically, they would use these pl- plumbing fixtures. They would attach you know, the, uh, the tubes together as far as the plumbing. Mm-hmm. And what happened is the water is so harsh out here, it would actually corrode and actually uh, burst these fixtures. Right. And from there, it would cause these leaks. And there was this got big it. settlement. Yep. And at that point, if you were one of the owners yep. of the property, you could pull that money out and uh, so, so fix Kevin, items. Did you go through this same problem? Uh, well, they came out and got it beforehand. They were Chinese fittings. That's why they... they ah, were, I knew they it. They made Chinese I knew fittings. it. You oh, know what I mean? We're just going to leave it at that, okay, Kevo? Right. Okay. <laughs> so here, here's the thing. W- within that zip code, there's about 187 uh, properties currently for sale at this time so it is a pretty tough market we uh, the caller uh didn't hang up on no, us no no we're still on here Kevin, okay, you're okay. still there right yeah that's got static What's the- oh gotcha gotcha here's the thing uh the price per square foot is about 104 dollars per square foot the average days on the market is 31 days the average price is 162 thousand. get it that's okay. how we do it did that answer your question there kevin it does all right you got the name of the movie quote and actor now right yeah, that was uh, Napoleon Dynamite, John Hedlund. Uh, is that right? Is that right? It's- oh, Woo! got us a winner. Got a winner. Ding, 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 ding. Good ding, job, ding, ding, ding. Kevin. Very good job. So what we're going to, Kevin, mean? Kevin, get that information to our producer um, if you can, and we'll send this off to you this week. You'll have it. And uh, we want to say thank you for listening into the show and being part of the show, and hopefully we'll continue to get your listenership. Okay, thanks. All right, Kevin. Take care. Thank you. Bye. So let's go back into the uh, situation with the Kitek plumbing you talked about. Did, yeah, yeah. So you, were you a part of that too? Did you ever? I mean, like, did you have Bro, clients? Don't, no, don't, listen. Did you have clients that was involved in that? Oh, okay. I thought you was like, you part of that? <laughs> <laughs> were you following that lo- that no, class uh, action? Uh, I, I can tell you what, man. There, there's a lot of transactions during that time period yeah. where uh, we had clients that, even sellers that had those uh, issues. So one of the things that we do, and in today's market <laughs> as well, when also when we sit down with our client and we go through our presentation, the consultation, we explain to them during the inspection, make sure you ask that inspector, does this property have Kitech plumbing? Right. And if it does, yeah, let's... But are, did they stop doing that? I mean, why would they keep doing it if they had a long, uh, class action lawsuit? Did they make changes or no, something? No, no. The changes was, I believe it was a uh, $300 million lawsuit. Right. So they got that money. Uh-huh. But the problem is that some of these sellers went into uh, the properties and didn't do the repairs mm-hmm. where they actually had Kitech plumbing during that time. Right. But there was no leaks to the property. So they would pull that money out. Uh-huh. And sell the home. Hmm. So that's why it's very important to see if the property does have Kitech plumbing. And there are times where... But they're, 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 I want to ask this question. Yeah, yeah. You're buying a new home. What is, what is the plumbing that or the, the companies that they use now? It's obviously not Kitech, is it? Well, it, it's not a company, but the company was uh, based out of Canada. Uh-huh. And they manufactured the type of... Um, you know, fixtures that was actually from China. Right. So they were using that those products and they were selling it to our developers out here. But 
those those things no longer exist. But there are some homes that have gone through the process and they change out all the fixtures. Right. But as a consumer, you need to know these things. I got gotcha. you. You all see right. what I'm saying? I see what now, you're saying. Now, within the SRPD, which is required that the seller What is an must, SRPD? Everybody's going to be, what is SRPD sounds that? for Seller Real Property Disclosure, and all it's right. a form. The seller must identify anything that is wrong with the property. Up front. Up front. Gotcha. Or may affect the value of the property. Affect the value, yep. Now, this is a very important because within 24 months of closing, if we can prove that the seller... Did not provide the information. The buyer has a right to go back to sue the buyer, uh, the seller for two times the amount of the damage. Court attorney fees. Got it. All right. Let's go into application news. You ready for this? Let's do this. All right. So really, it took a, a nice tide in the different, and it went a different direction here for refinances. We yeah, talked yeah. about it going and dipping. Uh, we lost about eight percent from refinance applications from last week to the week before that. Yeah. Um, very slight. Higher, a uh, little slight higher uh, interest rate this week, and it did contribute to that. And I think when you look at that situation, I'll tell you, people are watching interest rates more than you think. <laughs> I mean, especially if you're refinancing. You know, if you're saving. I uh, mean, does it really come down with the interest rates? Because you know what we never talk about is the APR. No, it does. Because you know what? APR is really geared towards what your total true cost of the loan yeah. is. And that gives you all the the, the cost of what the, the company and what the fees will be in char- uh, charged to you yeah. to get the refinance done. But what they're looking at uh, is if you're staying in your home, yeah, yeah. What is a lot of people are still considering, obviously, to, to be in their home for a long period of time. Not everybody gets out of their home in five to seven years. But if you're staying in your home, they might look at, you know what, $50, $100. That's a savings that I just have. I don't have to really work for. You know, I go to Dan and get a refinance done, really you can add costs into the loan. You do a streamline. I mean, some of them out there, you don't even have an appraisal. You that's, don't. That's a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, that's that's. but the thing is this. If you're going to save money in the long term, that's good because yeah. you're thinking as an investor. Mm-hmm. You're thinking as somebody that is a business person. If I save 100 or $200, that's going to be significant. It could be, you know, we talked about inflation going up. It could be, it could help the family. You know, yeah. you got a family of five. Two hundred dollars is going to the store and getting food for two weeks, maybe. You know what I mean? That's it. Two hundred is only for two weeks. Hey, inflation's going up. <laughs> <laughs> also, the total mortgage applications fell four point three percent, and this is normal. Is it? Yeah, I think that seems it, a I lot. Think, well, I think four point three percent is not a lot, but it's in the beginning of the year. It's always up and down. Yeah, you know. And then when we start getting closer, I think to summer. You start to see that happening more because people are now considering when their kids get out of the out of school, uh, maybe they're going to be you know having time now yeah. to move. Then they're going to say, well, let's this is the time to do it. Let's take get our mortgage application. You know, May June, by July or August, they're out moving into a new home. And you know what's crazy? Like how the weather plays a big part of it too. Absolutely. And we talked about that. That's why Michigan <laughs> lost two third of its people there. Uh-huh. <laughs> <I'm> just like, <laughs> <laughs> also, mortgage applications on purchase homes uh, was actually up this week. Oh, so, was it really? Yeah. So you want to look at that? Um, after six straight weeks of decline, uh, you have a total of forty basis points um, on an average contract interest rate that uh, for a thirty uh, thirty year fixed rate mortgage. 417 or less increased to 3.85%. So I talked to you about that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the weekly declines in interest rates, really, this is something that's going to be temporary. I think it's going to go back down again mm-hmm. because, as we talked about, the Fed cannot raise interest rates. If they do that, the consumer confidence and everything into the home buying purchase and everybody looking to purchase a home is going to start to go away if they really start to have rates go up. And guess what? Here comes inflation. People are going to have problems. Now everybody that's going to be renting is now cost of renting is going up. You got to look at these things and you got to make really sound decisions, but you're not going to have rates make huge swings, you know, over, mm-hmm. over week to week. So would you say uh, real estate um, is about 30% of our economy? I would say it's a very big part of it. And mm-hmm. I would say the reason why is because look at what it does. Not only does it put you in a position when you buy a home that yeah. you're, you're employing people, you know, contractors, yeah. construction workers, you know, when you have that constant build, no. bank, banks are moving money. And when you know that that's going on, the economy is actually, it doesn't say it's doing well, but there's activity. So it does help stimulate the economy and stimulate, 
Obviously, when banks are involved, you have investors come in and try to invest into these properties. You know, that does help. And I think it does keep our economy as a backbone saying, look, as long as the housing market's good or it's decent, we should be fine. Are there areas we can try to improve? I mean, there's problems in other areas, but the housing market's definitely important. You got gotcha. it. It's a huge, it's a very important to look and see what, like we talked about, the new home sales. Yeah. They were lower than what they projected for mm-hmm. last year. That's a concern. Mm-hmm. You know, you look at uh, where the rates trended this week. Mortgage bond prices finished the week slightly uh, higher. Uh, I'm sorry, lower, excuse me. And what happened is, is this mixed data for feds from the feds mm-hmm. really caused uncertainty. Consumer confidence went down. Um, you got weekly jobless claims were near expectations, so that really didn't affect us. The gross domestic product rose, which was good. How much? Uh, it didn't re- rise too much. It was 1%, 1 versus the expected 0.4%. So that's not enough to have an impact on basically. It's it's it does help, but yeah. it's not going to change things. Now, why that did that is if you look at that and you look at the employment, it mm-hmm. did give confidence for them for rates and rates started to creep up, and that's one of the indicators of why. Got it. So if you look at the overall picture of where rates ended up, I'll tell you right now that rates finished the week approximately a quarter to third eighth of a discount point worse. So let, let's clarify this. So if our economy is doing good, interest rates will go up. Is that correct? Interest rates will go up as long as the economy as a whole is doing good. That is correct. correct. Okay. So, but you got a lot of indications, you know, mm-hmm. but inflation goes up with that. Mm-hmm. That's a problem because you could correct interest rate or with something with interest rates but you can't correct inflation yeah you can't correct that and once it gets out of out of whack yeah i mean if you're at four percent inflation their target goal was two percent mm-hmm. we're at 2.2 and they said well that's time to raise rates they didn't do that mm-hmm. well why there's not enough of consumer confidence that's right you know and also when you have data like this where most of the economy from what everybody's trying to say is great and thriving vegas is doing well all right so i wouldn't have any alarm there's there's not a lot of indication that, that, that this is one of the well, big it contributors. Just, it, but it just has it, not trickled down here no. just yet. Right. So, you know, the information that we're giving you is it's based upon a global level and also on, a, you know, a national level too as well. Right. Then it breaks it down to a micro level as well. The Fed is always focused on that inflation, though. And yeah. I tell you, that wasn't the barometer, though. What we were talking about in the beginning was the CPI, which is mm-hmm. the core price index. That is really the stability of what a consumer can and can buy something for. Yeah. Is prices stable? That's what mm-hmm. they're looking at, not inflation. Yeah. They said that it's inflation, but then they give out these little things on the side. Hey, when un- unemployment gets up to 6.5, we're going to start to raise rates. Mm-hmm. Hey, when it hits 2% inflation, we're going to start raising rates. Mm-hmm. It didn't happen. Yeah. And it's not going to happen. I, I think they we can't have it I happen. think at this time we still have a strong economy and we are still, you know, moving forward. Right. But I think if they raise rates, we're we're going to be running into I some issues. I man. don't think there's going to be the same amount yeah. of buyers. I think we're going to have problems with inflation. I think there's going to be a lot of problems with people's everyday living expenses yep. are going to go up. It's going to be a problem for everybody. It's Dan French with the Market Snapshot here on KDW and News Talk Radio. We'll be right back. We have a whole lot of show left. We're going to talk about why it's important and maybe considering purchasing a home versus renting. We'll be right back. Get the latest financing and real estate news anytime you like. Just log on to danfrenchloans.com. Oh, sure, I can do that. Don't you dare go away. More with Dan and company coming right up here on the Market Snapshot. Welcome back to the Market Snapshot. This is Dan French from Nova Home Loans, your go-to mortgage specialist here in Las Vegas. I'm in studio today with Chuck. It's ITZ Crusoe from Simply Vegas. And uh, how's things going today, Chuck? It's you doing well? Dude, I'm hype, man. I'm loving it. <laughs> I was just going to tell you, man, uh, you know, it's, it's great to have this content we're putting out on Sunday. And, uh, you know, with a lot of people out there, you know, they're tuning in hopefully they're getting good information you know this ever-changing las vegas market's constantly going on and with rates really they're not doing anything i mean they've dropped but they haven't done anything where everybody wants to indicate that this is going to happen where their rate hike is going to happen three times this year well it's not going to happen it, it will be lucky to have it happen once why all indication tells me that the everything with the confidence within the economy i don't think there's going to be a huge urgency to do this because I don't think the Fed 
really has confidence in what's going on. And they're passing that to the consumer now because the consumer really um, is somebody that needs to, they need to be involved. They need to be able to purchase things. They need to be able to purchase homes. They need to be able to purchase everyday uh, expenditure and things that they put money into with family, kids, things like that. It's very important. And I think consumers are getting a lot smarter nowadays, and they're getting a lot conservative. Yes. I mean, a, a lot yes. of them are really just not going out, buying a home right away. You know, they're doing their research as far as what the best rates, what's the best companies to deal with, you know, what's the best place to, uh, you know, buy and invest in certain locations for future growth. Right. I mean, I get asked these questions all the time. I mean, it's just unbelievable. You know, our millennials in today's age, I mean, they're getting a lot smarter. I mean, it's it's just crazy. Well, let's say this. You're promoting all these down payment assistance programs. We're going to talk about that, and you're a renter. Well, renting, you want to put this in consideration because let's say the cost of living goes up. Yeah. Cost of living is going to go up for everything that you do. Mm -hmm. All right? Not only that. Is your wages going to stay the same as that inflation increases, or is the wage average wage earner going to increase as the inflation goes? Typically, that doesn't work that way. And so you, you have to understand if you're out there and you're getting a, a wage increase, we're going to get inflation. You have to understand that if you work at McDonald's and you're asking for fifteen dollars an hour, then you have to understand that price and goods are going to go up. Yes. So it washes it itself. Right. So. I, what do, what do you think, as a whole, what do you think that the economy needs to do moving forward? First off, should we raise interest rates? I think there needs to be um, some type of increase this year. I don't know. We don't, But it only is going to happen if now, – now, listen, I'm going to say this. Consumers are enjoying this. Yeah. Once consumers see that this is going to go up or it does go up, I think – Everybody's going to run for the hills and say, I'm not, I'm not buying a home. I, I think we just need to bust the bubble, let the uh, deflation take place. Right. Okay. Let, let's start all over. Okay. Let's let's gather everything up, start moving forward, and start making the repairs and start paying off our debt. Because our debt is way above $19 trillion. Yeah. Why, why is that? They print money? Well, the reason why is because QE3, yep. the reason why they printed this money, right, it was to give back to the banks and to – loan out the bonds again to increase the economics right. of the U.S. Right. So that way, what happens is why they do that, it shows that we have a strong economy and other countries will come out and buy our bonds, right? Okay. And that's how we stay strong. But the problem is if our consumers are not buying product and GDP is down, what happens is people retract and they don't buy stuff. If I don't buy something, my dollar will affect the next person and the next person and the next person. And this is very important. You know what's very uh, intriguing, too, is the fact that the dollar has actually lost value and that the Canadian dollar... About 80%. Yeah, the Canadian dollar over the last few weeks is now showing signs of of really starting to compete with the dollar. And, And I don't know why that value drops, but... You know, what What would consider us to having a weak dollar? I mean, is it is consumer pricing is not spending? That 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 is correct. Because, people are not spending. Because this is how it works. It's like a game of Monopoly. You have every single country that's out there, and their value is based upon consumer goods, things that are moving, right, and things that are selling. And that shows how strong that their dollar are. Then what normally happens is they exchange the U.S. dollar because – we are the leading force, but as our dollar starts to get weakening and certain economies are starting to get stronger, then what happens is they start buying their products, ex- uh, exporting, exporting their products. Which does that, affect us. And it affects us, and that's how we have a strong economy. And what happens is when an economy goes into bankruptcy, that's how wars will begin. Yeah. I'm going to say this. If you're out there and you're listening, we're not trying to give you a big urgency of, oh, my God. The, you know, Buy now. Buy now. No, no, no. It's, it's not even that. It's not yeah. even a sense that we're actually um, giving you some type of um, information that, that's really an alarming. This has been already going on. Yeah, it, it has. But it's just been kind of uh, put over with a blanket, if you want to call well, it. Well, I, keep- I think a lot of the consumers, they just live day to day. They live here in Vegas. They don't see what's going on. Right. And believe it or not, the global economy really affects – Las Vegas. Absolutely. Sooner or later, it will. And you have to understand what's going on. Like, we talked about Venezuela. I mean, inflation's up almost 700% in one year. Yeah. The problem is, if they file for bankruptcy, this is how wars are going to be created. Because if Venezuela can't pay their debt, other countries are going to go over and take over their debt. Right. And then they're going to put them into a loan. 
right? Probably giving them debt and putting them on an interest rate that's mm-hmm. going to be getting from them. Now they're now they're Correct. paying debt to another country. And, and that's what we do. We sell our bonds in exchange that, hey, you know what? We'll give you a certain percentage. And that's why we have to have a strong economy because so we are the leading force. Looking at our economy, and that's why we're bringing this out, now you bring it back to the consumer standpoint and look at it uh, – from a lens, if you want to say from from a consumer, is it is now the time to buy a home? Well, everybody's got a different goal and everybody's timing is Correct. different in life. Now, what I want to say is that if you're buying a home, is it is it good to invest? Absolutely. Well, I tell you what, if you're buying a home, right, and you're buying a based upon appreciation, now is not the time to buy. And I'm right. gonna, I'm I'm going to tell you that right it's now. It's a very but- slow slow process or slow yield you're going to get. Correct. If you want to say on getting appreciation in your property, Correct. right? But now, if you are buying in today's market for cash flow and cash flow only, now is the time to buy because why, why rates, is that? Because rates are so low. But you know what? If you're a renter, and we're going to talk about this here in a second, you're a renter. They're going to always adjust to whatever those mortgage prices are, right? Here's the thing. I don't think interest rates are going to go to 6 7%. I don't think so either. I, I, don't, I don't think we're we're no longer in that day and age anymore. No. I think we are just hovering where we're at. And I think they're going to be putting out cute things like QEs and all this other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the truth. That's going to make right. everybody say, you know what? We are, we're appeasing the consumer. Yeah. We're giving confidence in the consumer just to keep you at bay and keep spending just enough to keep the economy going. Yeah. But it's not a good economy still. It's, it's not. I don't think it's a thriving economy. And I'll tell you right now, if, if they don't change things where the inflation is going to hit us at one point if they don't change the direction Inflation of has already hit us. It's just we don't know that. And the reason why is because oil prices are down. A gallon of gas right now is about a, a, a what a buck fifty. So what they do is they take that money and they go out and they go to Walmart and they go shopping, right. but not knowing that hey, it's four or but five bucks a gallon right. of milk. But there are inflations. Take a look at the numbers. That's, it's out there. Absolutely. And here's the thing: that's one indication that something's lowered, which is yeah. oil. Mm-hmm. Where else has it gotten better? Well, if you take a look at North Dakota and Texas, unemployment. For those companies are down. Yeah, but why are they down? We talked about this. Because you're a part-time worker, and now you're working, but you're not a full-time worker. You're exactly. still making a small wage. Mm-hmm. You, yeah, you're making money, but now you're getting half of what you would be able to get Correct. back in, the, in, in maybe 20, 15, 20 years ago, you know, when everybody was working 40-hour-a-week jobs. And, and, you know, yes, the economy is doing good or it's okay. Is it thriving? Absolutely not. Why? Because if it was, they would raise interest rates. That's right. And if the consumer realizes, you know what, is now a time to buy? Well, you look at it and say renting versus buying a mortgage. Well, renting can have the the, – if your mortgage is set every single month and it will always be there, I'd rather have that than have something where it's in uncertainty where, yes, they'll lower it to whatever the mortgage rate will be, but guess what? They'll also raise it. So if you're sitting there and you're at twelve hundred dollars and you're paying eleven fifty and they know that your rent's raising fifty dollars because yeah. they know that they can get that in that area, you got to take that in consideration. Now, if you look at the interest write off on that, yeah. okay, that could save you an additional eighty to hundred dollars at the end of the year, including the tax. On the write-off. back end, though. On the back end. Now, here's the thing about that, though: you still have to average that in because no matter what, if you sign up for a home, mm-hmm. you're going to be in that long term anyways. You're going to sign a lease for a year, right? Mm-hmm. If you sign up for a home minimum. Your first year, you're going to get that tax rebate, the tax incentives that's on it. Why would you not want to sign up for it? If I'm going to put money into something, I'm looking at the return of my investment. Well, what it comes down to is the position that you're currently in, if you're going to be living here for a few years or not. The second thing is, where do you live and where do you want to live? Right. And you take a look within that zip code as far as if I got a two-bedroom apartment paying $1,200 a month, is it worth it to buy a three-bedroom? Is it lower than the cost of $1,200 a month. So these are the factors that you really do have to weigh in. So it doesn't really work for everybody. It just comes down to your current situation, where you're going to be, and what is it that you want to do. Bottom line is if you have the ability to have an option, I would definitely purchase a home with a mortgage. Why? Because you have options and opportunity to maybe make some money. You might not make the amount of money that you you think you'll make, Mm -hmm. uh, but you you could put yourself in a position to save money, to get uh, interest right off and get things like that and the perks that come with owning a home, including doing what you want with the property. Well, I'll tell you one of the negatives about owning a home is when things break, you have to pay for the items to be fixed. Well, that's true. And 78% of the people that live in the United States, which is we have a population of 330 million people, 78% are living paycheck to paycheck. Preach on, brother. That's what I do. <laughs>
<laughs> but you know what? That's a good a good thing to talk about. Uh, this is Dan French with the Market Snapshot on News Talk Radio 720 AM here every Sunday from 11 to 1 PM. Uh, we're here to give you information through uh, for financing and real estate. And one of the things I wanted to tell you is that when you're living paycheck to paycheck, there's 47 million people out there on food stamps. That's a lot. If you had an economy that was thriving, <laughs> why would you have 47 million people on food stamps? Mm-hmm. That's one thing you got to look at, right? You're right. The other thing you got to look at is if you have people living paycheck to paycheck, what does that tell you? That tells you you're not making enough money to get the goods and services that's out there to be provided to Correct. you. Correct. And you're barely surviving. Mm -hmm. If anything comes up in life, I think it's like 70% or 80% of the people out there do not have any savings in their account. You're absolutely right. And what happens is if something happens in their lifetime, a car breaks down, if they have medical issues, if you take a look at the statistics, they will file for bankruptcy. And the bankruptcy filings are like six, seven thousand dollars Well, that's the problem. And when you see that if somebody bought a home four or five years ago, yeah. you know, like my parents, they sunk a lot of money into their uh, house. They lost a lot of it, mm -hmm. right? And they did a short sale, I believe, is what happened. But yeah. um, anyways, they lost money. And the problem is, is that... They invested a ton of money. All that money that they invested, they might have used that for the retirement. Maybe they thought that was what that was going for. Mm -hmm. Listen, everybody doesn't always know the path, but they, if they're putting money into something, they know that something's increasing. They're thinking, well, maybe it's working out. Well, I could tell you, one of the asset classes that you definitely need to have some of your money in is, number one, is real estate. you got to be really diversified. Well, let me, let I mean, me, you can't just you can. jump into the stock market. But I would definitely not put all my money in real estate. Why? I wouldn't either. Why? Because you, just like what happened. Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you, Cash is king. You need to diversify how you to spend your money, yeah. and you need to let your money work for you. If Correct. you wanted to get money out of that out of that house, mm -hmm. guess what? You got to come to me for a refinance. It's going to cost you money to do that. Yeah. So looking at the overall picture, renters are not excited about moving back into a property after they're investing in money like that, yeah. losing their nest egg in some Correct. cases. And now that the economy has saying that there's not that much debt. Well, there's not that much debt, and we're losing debt because people now are not owning homes. Mm -hmm. You don't have the debt that's on the books because now people that got burned are, exactly. not, are not back in the market to buy. They say, I'm not doing this anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, I got burned. I lost $150,000 in my house. Why am I going to get back into a house? You know, and I get that. But at the same time, if you're looking at the idea that I think looking at the economy becoming stronger, understanding the, the information that's out there, will make you have better decisions buying a home. Yeah. Buying a home will appreciate in this market. It's going to be a very slow appreciation. I don't think it's going to hit a bubble, but there's still concerns out there. All you know? I'm saying is if you're going out and you're going to buy a home and you're buying it for an investment property or a secondary property, this is how I'm going to analyze this property for you. Number one, is it in a good location? Should the market happen to tank and you need to rent this property out? Are you still going to make cash flow to cover your mortgage? And that's the way I look at every single deal. And don't be mortgage broke. Yes. You don't want to do that. You don't want to get into your what home. What is mortgage broke? It's break Basically, it down. you're paying more than half of your income towards your mortgage. So, you, so you're Why saying that. Why would you that, do that? So you want, you want to be below half of your income. I would say minimum, you probably be about 40%. 40%. 40%. Because mm -hmm. that tells you there's an extra 10 to 15%, say 35 to 40% yeah. of your home is all going, it's not all going towards that mortgage. You yeah. got a little bit of money now left over. Mm -hmm. In case something goes up where you could save that money. Yeah. You know, and that's what people don't understand. That money that you have, that extra 60% or 30 or uh, 55%. Yeah. That money should be socked away somewhere and just go for necessities. Not saying you're not going to go buy anything, but you might want to put half of that money away and mm -hmm. put it into a savings account. Then take the other money. And, you know, th this is not a show about trying to teach you how to, how to spend your money. But <laughs> what, what I'm trying to tell you is this. If you're looking to buy a home. Yeah. You don't want to get into it and say, I'm, I don't have any extra money getting into it. Yeah. You know, I'm basically just like in the past, everybody wanted to go maximize how much they, they purchased. And guess what? Little to no money out of pocket. What's going to happen? They're going to leave the property, yeah. which they all did. Mm -hmm. So these down payment assistance programs, you know, like we talked about, if is it good to rent versus buying? Well, they're giving product 3% that's going on right now, but you're going to pay for it in the interest rate. We got a new product that's called. Home at last. Program. Home at last. This is the same kind of version of uh, home as possible, but it does give you up to 5% instead of 4%. And, you know, that's a good thing because 
It helps. Five percent of closing costs. Five percent up the down payment assistance money for nice. your down payment. Now here's the thing. You can always use that, and let's say your down payment's three and a half percent. Well, you can use that for additional costs, right? You can roll that over. Yeah. So here's Woo! here's the good thing. You know, this program is not as extensive though as the home is possible. Yeah. You know, but it still has closing. Its grant is available for down payment and closing costs assistance mm-hmm. uh, in the amount of up to two to five percent. That's great. You know, it's good. If you're not out buying a home because of this program right here, why would you not? Yeah. You know, it's because you. The thing is this, if I had to invest money into something, what's going to happen? What's going to happen if you invest money? You're going to take a little bit Mm -hmm. more ownership in that, right? That's right. Okay. If you're a person out there and you're struggling Mm -hmm. and you're somebody that really would like to become a homeowner and you really think that there's no options out there, well, credit services will help you get your score up to a 640 because this is where it needs to be. What do you mean credit services is going to help you? Well, because I have a credit services. So let's say you're below a 640. They're going to get you there for free. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get into a home that's going to cost you almost nothing. Mm -hmm. You get closing costs or whoever I'm working with gets closing costs incentive. You're really little to no money out of pocket. And all you're going to be worried about is really an earnest money deposit. If you don't take advantage of this program, which will probably go away, I'm not going to say anytime soon, but at some point, I would highly recommend at least giving us a call and see if you can qualify. If you're paying rent in in, in the mark of $1,200 to $1,300, why why would you not? Well, That's let me ask you this. Throwing- what are some of the requirements with that right there? 640 credit score. You have a cap on your debt ratio, mm-hmm. and you have an annual income you can't exceed of 90, 95500 mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of people that could qualify for that. Yeah. you know. Remember, and- the average household in the state of Nevada, $51,000. Well, let's say this, 51000 Average home, two twenty, right? Two twenty. dollars Correct. Mortgage on that, you're probably looking at about a twelve dollars or $1,300 payment. Woo! Is that with uh, principal and interest, taxes, insurance? Yeah, I mean, it's roughly. The roughly? Yes. Yeah. Gotcha, so, gotcha. But that, the, the thing is this. And how much is a two-bedroom condo in today's market? $1,200. There you go. That, that's proof in the pudding right there. You know, I'm walking out the studio right now. Hey, remember that? <laughs> proof in the pudding. Proof in the pudding. I haven't said that in probably 20 years. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's move on. So, you know, going back to it this yeah. last week, you know, I met a lot of people that were trying to get a refinance, so I went through that process. I mm-hmm. met a lot of people that are first-time home buyers that really don't understand the process. Um, I'm starting to put, which is a great thing, is you're really putting um, – I have a step-by-step process now yeah. for helping clients that have no idea what to, what to, what to expect mm-hmm. from A to Z how to get in there. And it's going to be a new video that's going to be on my uh, website, danfrenchloans.com. That's going to say, look, start here. This is where, you know, the initial application starts, and here's how you finish. And at the end of the day, you're going to have a set of keys. And I think that's important because a lot of people don't understand the loan process. Yeah. All they know is you go to me and you say, can I get a loan, and that's it. No, there's that's a lot it. of moving parts, trust there, me. There is. And, it, and to get one of those just from A to Z, you're mm-hmm. working with four or five different type of, uh, you know, entities that are all trying to do the same thing. You got title, you got processing, underwriting, me, yeah. you, uh, buyer, agent, seller. I mean, everybody, appraisal, the inspection, everything. So there's just so much that comes in, and there's so many things that need to be addressed. The process, the process is streamlined of how I have it, but I can tell you that you know, looking at this overall picture, what I'm going to start doing with this website is really putting out content that's going to help the average consumer, and I think that's what's important. Mm-hmm. Um, so looking at renting versus owning, I think if there's renters out there and they're considering buying a home, and there's somebody that wants to come back in the market, well. You know, I think in, in, the, in the long run of it, you have to feel confident about what you're doing. Yeah. And, and anybody that buys a home that puts the investment and has that money into it, my opinion is try to put the money down payment if you can because you're going to get a better interest rate. And, you know, you're going to have a little bit more of a streamlined process, I think, in, in situations where if the seller looks at that, they might think you're a stronger buyer. Mm-hmm. They might help with closing costs more. Yeah. Possibility. Um, and I think that your offer might get accepted in some cases in that direction. Now, there's always that chain of command mm-hmm. where when somebody gets into a house, typically it starts with cash, then it goes conventional, then it goes FHA and VA. And is that how it's always looked at? It, that's how it's always looked at. But understand that cash is not always king. Now, what's enticing for cash is just there's no appraisals and it's just a quick close. But if a cash buyer offers 200 and I know that the praise, uh, the property appraises at 210 and I'm an FHA buyer and I offer 210 and I ask for 6% of closing costs, yeah. he still makes $204,000. Right. So if you're willing to wait additional 15 more days to make $4,000, why well, not take how do you, that? How do you counter that? 
You counter that by offering a hired offer. That is correct. Now, let's say the offer comes in. It's I'm going to offer $5,000 more mm-hmm. on this specific property. Yeah. And I'm going to get the deal. Say I get the deal, and now the appraisal comes in 10000 less than what your offer was. Then at that point, we go back to the negotiating table. We ask for the seller to do a price reduction. Now, what could happen is the seller says no, or we could just meet halfway, uh-huh. or we can figure out if we can get some lender credit back, or we'll figure out a way to resolve the problem in order to solidify this deal to move forward. Right. Now, we are pretty good at negotiating the deal, and we do our deals up front, so that way we don't run into this issue also we run the comps to make sure that this thing is going to appraise now if you're about a ten thousand dollar appraisal apart then you know what maybe that's not the right agent to be working with right i could tell you one thing too i got a new program it's not very new but it's pretty new yeah. it's been coming out a lot uh it's a it's a 12 month uh requirement uh-huh. to get for self-employed now you can't have multiple self-employed businesses but if you have mm-hmm. one employer which is, you know, you're employing yourself. Yeah. You got an S Corp mm-hmm. corporation. You have at least two years of working history. Yeah. And that's your only employment. Mm-hmm. We can take a look at your 12 months and see if we can, we can approve you just for that 12 months. So if you took a huge loss, loss maybe yeah. this current year, mm-hmm. well, maybe we can just hit you for whatever you claim. So and I think you, guys are not, you guys are not averaging it out. You guys we are still just taking are. Okay. No, we still are. But on a case by case situation, in a situation like that, mm-hmm. I have a system where I can run it through to possibly get you approved on just a 12-month basis. And if you want to find more about that, you can give me a call outside studio, 781-6682. We'll schedule a consultation. If you're a business owner and you're somebody out there that has maybe been denied, maybe you can give me a call outside studio and we can get that handled and we can sit down and see if it works for you. So. Let, let's talk about that. How does that usually work? Because some lenders can't get it done, then you end up getting it done. Are you like dissecting the file and figuring out ways to make it happen? No, I think I'm just better a better lender. Man, your head is so huge. I just play. <laughs> I just play. <laughs> what I really uh, think is, is every lender's got a case by case yeah, where yeah. they uh, they have overlays. Yeah, and I gotcha. what, it, what it what it says is that this investor will allow it where this investor has a problem with it. So it really depends on the program that 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 lender has. It does, and it depends on a lot of things. How long the history's been yeah. going on? You know, if you go Fannie Mae. Mm-hmm. On a business owner, now they're looking at cash disbursements. Yeah. You know, these things are important, and it's very important to address them up front before you get into a situation. But I can tell you, if you're a business owner out there, mm-hmm. and maybe you've been denied, I'd still like to take a look at your tax returns and see if we can maybe get you approved for a home loan. Mm-hmm. Maybe your other lender could not. Uh, again, that number outside studio, 781-6682. Uh, you schedule a free consultation. And, uh, you know, most of my competitors make it harder than what it seems like to get a, a home loan. Yeah. And what my goal is to make it very streamlined and v- make it easy for you to go through the home loan process. And I think with our system at Nova Home Loans, with what I have in place, my team, my staff, everything there, Nova Home Loans is, has a, a very good reputation. And I can tell you right now, if you're looking to pi- to finance or you've already talked to a lender, mm-hmm. it'd always be good to have a second opinion. That's why loan estimates were created. This is Dan French with The Market Snapshot. We'll be here next week from 11 to 1 p.m., We're here every week on 720 KDWN News Talk Radio. Thank you for your listenership. We're here to make you smarter home buyers and smarter home shoppers. We'll talk to you next week. And we're out.